either going to get a crazy good deal on this or it's going to turn into a huge money pit. So this is a 2004 LTZ 400. Got this thing for $1,000. So the guy had it up for $1,500. I offered $1,000 and he said, come grab it. So the story on this is that the seller bought it from his cousin. He was going to fix it up and get it to work but decided it was too much of a project. So the seller said he doesn't know much about it. All he knows is that it does not go past second gear. So right now he says shifts good into first and second, but won't go past second gear at all. So that's not good. So today's goal is to get this thing running and driving by the end of the video. I'm hoping it's something in the clutch side, but it definitely could be the transmission could be the drum, could be the shift forks, could be the shift shaft, could pretty much be anything <laughs> at this point. But uh, we're gonna go over the whole thing and uh, diagnose everything today. Should be pretty fun. The rest of the quad looks pretty good. Tires are decent, rims aren't all bent. Has Nerf bars on that, plastics are really nice. Not all cracked. Seat cover isn't ripped at all. It looks pretty much stock, except for the Nerf bars. Stock silencer on there. Stock lights. It is missing the chain. It looks like the sprockets have seen better days. That one's missing a tooth right here. But it's got the, the front headlights on there. It doesn't look too bad. And the VIN is visible right there. And the 10th digit is a 4, so we know it's 2004. It was downpouring when I bought this thing, so I didn't really look it over too closely. So hopefully the engine isn't cracked. Hopefully nothing else is majorly wrong with it. But for $1,000, I figured it was a pretty good deal. So, let's get this thing cleaned up first, and then we'll start working on it. This one should be pretty interesting. Alright, this thing's pretty clean after being all cleaned up here. Cosmetically, it does not look bad. Alright, so this quad has been sitting for a while, so we're just going to go through the whole thing and uh, just try to get this thing running first before we dig into the shifting issue. But I'll show you guys what's going on with the shifting. So you can see the sprockets moving freely right here. We'll shift down. There's first. So it does shift into first. There's second. So it does shift into second. And then third, you can see the shifter won't go up at all. We'll go back down. There's first. And there's neutral. There's second. But it won't go past. See, it won't shift at all past that. You pull on the clutch, still won't shift. So, the seller wasn't kidding. It does not go past second gear. Put it back in the neutral. All right. So, we're gonna have to deal with that problem a little bit later. Let's kind of go through the quad here and check it over. 
So let's first check the air filter. All right, so the seat latch is right here. Get that off. All right, let's see if there's a filter in here. Yep, foam filter. Looks a little dirty. So we'll take that off and clean that. But at least there's a filter in it. So we're off to a good start. <laughs> Battery works. All right, neutral light doesn't look like it's working. Choke is working. All right, that's working. Cool. Let's see if the throttle works. Yep. All right, so there's juice in the battery. Let's check the oil next. So oil canisters right here. Looks like there's a dipstick on there. It says 2,000 milliliters. Let's see if there's anything in there. Huh. Looks pretty clear. I can see it's right up to here, about. Wipe that off one more time. Yeah, it's basically just the tip is showing up. Yeah, if that. So, definitely low on oil. That's not good. <laughs> if there's anything in here. Oh boy, I don't think there's any coolant in it. It's definitely low. I can't see any in there. So, we'll have to get that filled up too. See if that leaks. But usually that's not a great sign. See if the peacock's working here. It's getting gas. Let's see what that gas looks like. Could be water in it. Ah, nothing coming out. That looks like it might be kinked. Doesn't look like water's in the gas. Looks like pretty fresh fuel. Doesn't look too old.
Ooh, plug looks a little rough. Let's wipe that off a little bit. Let's see if we have spark. Good spark. I hear a knocking of some sort in the engine. That's not good. Let's see if you guys can hear it. Let me turn it over. What would that be? Sounds like a knocking to me. Hmm. That doesn't sound real great. Let's see, is there the stock tensioner on here? Yeah, it looks like the stock chain tensioner. Hmm. Well, we've got spark. Let's do a compression test and then we'll take off this valve cover and see what it looks like underneath there. All right, we've got our, we've got our compression tester going in. Let's see what we get for compression here. According to the forums, it said we should have around 140 pounds of compression with the automatic decompression mechanism activated. So we're going to throttle open and we'll see what we get here. So we're going about right there. Here we go. Let's see what we get. Throttle open. We're only getting like 70. Oh, well, that wasn't good. Try that again. I think our battery's dying. Throw it open. Getting about 120. PSI, so that's better, but it's not 140. <laughs> so we'll see, maybe it hasn't been ran in a while and those rings are a little stuck. But 120, it'll run with 120. There's one more right here. All right, get that out of the way. Get this cover off of here. These haven't been taken off in a while. Off now. Right, we 
we go. No shavings or anything. Do look down in here. Lobes look pretty good. Cam chain isn't super loose. You can see there's not a ton of slack in there. Everything's on here the way it should be. We're gonna check the timing next. Make sure timing's correct. And then we'll get the valve clearances too. Make sure those are good. And within spec. But yeah, so far so good. So the knocking probably wasn't the cam chain. 10 millimeter. Allen. Now we can rotate the crank by the nut right there. This is gonna be an eight millimeter. Oh man, that hasn't been off in a while either. If you look close, you can see the arrow right here. That arrow's gonna line up with the notch on the flywheel when we rotate this over. And I'll show you guys that notch. This is a 17 millimeter socket. And we look over this hole, turn over the engine, and see if we can find that mark here. It's right there. This one's very visible. You can see there's a T with a line. You want to line that line up with the arrow right there on the case. And you'll know you're at top dead center because the lobes are pointing out. See how the pointy part of the lobe is facing that way and that way on the lobes. And those look really good. Let's check the timing here. All right, timing looks pretty good. So there's a line right there parallel with the surface of the head and a line right there parallel with the surface of the head, a line right there and line right there. So we are spot on with the timing. All right, intake valve should be set at five thousandths, exhaust valve eight thousandths. All right, here's five thousandths on the feeler gauge. Let's see if that slides in. Yep. And, yep, perfect. All right, exhaust valve eight thousandths. All right, here's eight thousandths on the feeler gauge. Let's see what that looks like. Perfect. Good. Exhaust valves are good. All right, let's get this car out of here. So we get the choke off, and the throttle is on the other side over here. We can get the throttle cable off here. All right, there we go. And that's what the throttle looks like in there. just the choke and they actually make it accessible on this carb unlike a lot of other carbs so 
a little gunked in there actually. You can see. Alright, let's dig into the car. See if there's any water in there. Oh, there's definitely a little water in there. You can see the separation. You guys can see that or not, it's a little tough to see. But there's definitely water in the car. See the gunk in there. Yep, the car was pretty dirty. The jet was getting clogged too from that. Get that float out. No gas in the float. It looks pretty good. The tip is getting a little worn there. All right, main jet coming out of here. You can see that was pretty clogged with that old gas on there. Main jet is a 130 for the main. That was partially clogged. A starter jet. Get that out. That looks like it's a 60. <sighs> that was clear. And you've got your pilot jet. was clogged. This is only a 22.5 for the pilot. So pretty small for the pilot. And you've got your fuel screw right here. So we're one, two, three, three turns out on the fuel screw. There we go. Whole thing came out. Looks good. <sighs> Emulsion tube. Looks good. Check out the diaphragm here. Spring is on there. Looks good. Yep, needles staying down. Go through the diaphragm here. So far, no rips. Very flexible. Feels really good. So no problems with the diaphragm at all. So everything checks out with the carb. It's just a little dirty. So we're gonna blow through everything, clean it out with compressed air and some brake cleaner. And we'll come back and reinstall it. See if this thing fires up. All right, we got the carburetor back on. It's working good. Let's get the gas tank back on. We just cleaned that out. 
get some fresh fuel in here and we'll see if this thing fires up. All right, let's see what happens here. Choke it. Shuts off. to turn the idle up a little bit. There we go, it's idling good now. Throttle was just a little low. No smoke. All right, I don't want to run it too long because there's no coolant and the oil was low. So now that we know it runs, let's dig into the shifting issue. All right, we're gonna run this thing and then see if it shifts through the gears with it running, because maybe it makes a difference. I don't think it will, but we'll see. Fish first. Nope. Won't go past second there. Yeah, that doesn't make a difference. All right, engine drain bolt. It's underneath the engine, you can kind of see it right through there. So let's get that out. Them pretty good. Not a whole lot in there. Not seeing any big metal chunks at all.
there's a lot more oil in there coming out. We're definitely shy of 2,000 milliliters, so oil was definitely low. All right, here's the oil that came out of it. You can see it was a little bit low. And it's really thin. It's definitely needed to be changed out, but it's not milky or anything. And there's no metal chunks in it. So that all looks good. I was expecting to see some chunks from the crank, but nothing. So oil actually checks out. All right, let's see how much coolant was in there. Off. Right, take the cap off. There was some in there. That's good. It's getting all over the place, of course. Quite a bit in there. All right, let's take a look at the water pump here first. Get that off. See if the impeller is still intact here. Just plastic. That looks good. And then impeller looks good. No broken pieces on the impeller. Awesome. That looks good. I guess we can check out the oil filter while we're over here. So the oil filter should tell us if there's any chunks in here. Let's take a peek. So far, no chunks at all. Looking pretty good. Nothing. No flakes whatsoever. So we really lucked out there. So I'm pretty sure rod bearing and crank is fine. Awesome. I was not expecting that. <laughs> Thought for sure the crank would be bad, but so far we're looking out. So, on to the next step, we gotta get this clutch cover off of here. So all the bolts have to come out around here, and then it looks like the brake lever has to come off.
all the bolts are off. Let's see if the cover comes off here. Hey, the gasket was saved too. Cool. No broken gears there. On the water pump. It's looking good. Ooh. <sighs> Big chunk of something. Laying right there. Well, that's not good. <laughs> what the heck could that be? Look at that. That was in the bottom of the case. So something's broken in there. Let's get that clutch off. Wonder what the heck broke off in here. That looks pretty good. Got the rod. I'll probably just leave the push rod in there. Zip this off. All right, so get the nut. Got our washer. I can get that off. Take the whole clutch off. Something's got to be broken behind here. What is it though? Back of the clutch looks good. Clutch basket looks good. It looks perfect. Everything's looking pretty good. See if something's underneath here. Is the oil pump moving? Yeah. It's pumping a lot of oil out. Where the heck is that piece that broke off coming from? Any part of the case here? Let's see if we can get a clue. So that's what that piece looks like. <sighs> Getting stuck underneath here. Let's see if it shifts now. <laughs> nope. I'm afraid that's going to be the transmission.
that's not really tensioned either. I feel like that should be tensioned better. Let's see this. The shift shaft out right here, if we can. Coming. Is this thing bent or something? Should be coming a lot easier than that. <sighs> Alright, the shift shaft I think is definitely bent. I had to pound it from the other side here. Oh yeah, look at how bent that is. Yeah, that rod is bent really badly. Look at that. So shift shaft is really bent. So what I think happened is the chain came off and then bent this. Because that is horrible. <laughs> so that's one part of the problem. Let's see what else is going on. That's pretty bad. I've never seen one that bent before. Alright, let's see if we can get these off of here. I think we're gonna need the impact screwdriver for that one. Oh, that's not good. That tab broke off. Trying to get that screw out. Oh, we're gonna have to drill those out. So we're gonna have to weld that piece back on. <sighs> Shoot. That really sucks. Oh boy. Yeah, those are not coming out. They're stripped out now completely. There we go. Whew, finally. Alright. Shifting mechanism is off. Here. And that piece we're gonna have to drill out and retap. But let's see if this thing shifts now. Hopefully it does. Fine. Alright, can't go that way. Can't go that way, that's not good. Take this whole thing off here. <laughs> no, 
that was on there correctly. It's really bent. There's the spring. Yeah, so look at this. So that's the other problem. Look how bent this was. That's supposed to be straight with that. See that? It's bent. So what was happening was when you were twisting it, it would hit that top of that spring. Remember when I said, oh, that looks loose in there? That's why the tension wasn't as much as it should be on this, and it wasn't shifting into gear. So we're gonna bend that back, so bend this tab down, and straighten that out and try to put it back in, see if the single shift. All right, we bent this back, so now it's straight. Before it was really, really crooked. Now let's reinstall it and we'll see if it shifts properly now. Here we go. So here's first gear. You can see it won't go any further. And then here, it's neutral. Second gear. Third gear. Fourth gear fifth gear. And it can't go any further. So it's going through all the gears smoothly. There's the last one right there. So it's going through all five gears now. Very smooth. So that was the problem. It was the bent shift shaft, and then the bent spring mechanism right here. All right, so what was happening was because this was bent right here, that spring was sitting up too high, and it was hitting the drum star, and it was preventing it from moving any further. So that's why that wasn't shifting. So I'm not sure how it got bent. I'm thinking it got jammed in between that little piece we found, which I still haven't found out what that piece is from. I'm guessing that got jammed in there, and uh, then it bent that, and it bent the shift shaft, or the chain fell off, bent the shift shaft, and then something broke in here, and then bent that. That's kind of what I'm thinking. But it now shifts perfect through all the gears. There's no gears broken in here, so I'm hoping there isn't a gear broken in the transmission. I don't think there is. I don't think it would come all the way through here. All right, let's see if this little piece that came Oh, is magnetic. Yep. So it does stick to a magnet. So it's not aluminum. Check out the clutch and see if any of the parts are broken on there. Look all these plates. Nothing broken in there. That all looks good. Nothing broken behind here. That all looks good. So it doesn't look like anything to do with the clutch. All right, here's a little piece that broke off that was connected to the shifting mechanism right here. So that was connected like that. We've got to drill that out of here so we can connect this back to the engine. We're either gonna to have to weld it or have that screw go all the way through and uh, tap out that spot right there. So, in order to do that, we've got to drill it and use an easy out. We're gonna to try to use this little guy. That's deep enough. So 
Here's the easy out when we want to drill it in. And come back out with it. There we go. You can see it's taken down. Alright, we've got the bolt stuck in the case right here, so let's drill that out. Alright, let's see if that was deep enough yet. There we go. Coming. Ha. You can see how much Loctite was on there. Blue Loctite. That was tough to get off. Well, that came free. So what we're gonna do is tap this area right here. This is where that piece broke off. Tap that to the correct bolt size and then that piece can just drill all the way through and bolt onto the case instead of trying to weld that piece on there. And that holds the shifting mechanism in place. So, yeah, we'll do that once we get uh, the correct size tap there. All right, unfortunately, that's about as far as we can take it today. I was going to try to put it all back together, but then I remembered that the shift shaft is bent and uh, yeah, that wouldn't work. So we're gonna have to order up a shift shaft for it, a new mechanism right here, cause that one was bent. We just bent that one back, but I'd feel more comfortable getting a new one. And then we have to tap out the hole right here, get, get that prepped and then get two new bolts for right here and right here to hold down that shift mechanism. And once we do that, this thing should shift properly. So, let me know what you guys think in the comments about that piece that we found in the case. What do you guys think that's from? I'll show you guys one more time what that piece looked like. So it's not very wide in diameter, but it is not aluminum either. So what does that look like to you guys? Where could that possibly come from? So once we get this thing back together next video, we'll take it for a test drive and see if all the gears work. If all the gears work, obviously this thing's fixed. If not, if it misses a gear or has trouble shifting, we're tearing down the whole engine and uh, looking at those gears. But for now, we'll test it out and see what happens before uh, tearing it all down. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video, picking this thing up for a thousand bucks, getting it to run, and then diagnosing the no shift problem which I think we might get lucky, <laughs> but we will see you next video. So thanks for watching guys. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next video. And until next time, we are out.